Hiya, so I was asked if I could do a video explaining a bit more about how to use different sorts of keypad input on an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. And I've got a handful of um, common cheap keypads that you might uh, find for sale on uh, eBay and things like that for small electronics projects. So I've got a, um, a single row, four button kind of membrane style flexible pad input there. Um, I've then got uh, a sort of a slightly larger size with three columns and four rows, um, still with a membrane style, so it's sort of flexible um, and it has like a, a adhesive back so you can stick it onto things, it's very thin, um, which has the digits and also a star and a hash symbol. And then I've also got a sort of rigid style push button uh, four by four keypad input, which has got the digits and also the letters A, B, C, D down the side. Um, I mean, they're all relatively similar in terms of how you'd write the code to use them, but there are a few um, subtle differences between them. So we'll just sort of go through them one at a time. So I guess it makes most sense to start with the um, the smallest one. So this is the, the single um, row with four buttons in it. And you can see the interface connector has this kind of ribbon style there. In fact, if I push it uh, sort of gently, you see it actually comes apart and it has um, a kind of a top and a bottom side to the ribbon. Uh, this side here has got a single contact going down the side, um, and this side has got the other, uh, or four contacts in fact. So there's four buttons here, and each one of them has their own signal line, which is on that sheet there, which has got the four on it, and they also share a common um, pin that connects them, which is this one on the other sheet. So the way we'd normally wire this up is to wire the common pin to ground, um, and then you wire each of the other four um, uh, connectors there to their own unique uh, digital pin on your Arduino. Um, and then what you do is you um, measure using the digital read each of the pins that you've assigned the pins to and see whether you can feel that ground, that low signal from the ground wire being connected. If you can, then it means that that button is being pressed. If you can't, then that button isn't being pressed. Let me talk through the code to explain that a bit better. So I've got my Arduino code here over the left hand side uh, and I've also just loaded up uh, my Fritzing diagram on the right hand side so that you can um, see how I've got it wired in there. Um, the way that my keyboard is set up, I don't know if this is the same on all of them, the ground pin is the leftmost one. Um, so what I've done is I've sort of drawn it so that that pin um, there crosses over the board, um, just so that you can kind of see that the wires aren't crossed at all. So this is my first ground pin here, and then I've got each of the four signal wires for the pins. Um, now slightly confusingly, they're not actually uh, wired. You'd think they'd be wired from left to right corresponding to the button, so you'd think this would be um, button one, two, three, four. But it, again, on mine at least, it appears they're actually a little bit switched over. So this is uh, ground on the left, and then it's button two, button one, then button four, then button three. Uh, I've no idea why it's done that way. Um, but uh, you'll see that that is why in the code here, I've listed the four pins that the um, uh, that the wires are connected to in seemingly the wrong order. I've, I've written them as 12, 13, 10, 11. Um, because then when I reference them in this array, they are in the right order from left to right again. So hopefully that makes sense. So those are the four pins uh, that each of the, the buttons is connected to, and they're listed in the order so that they're now left to right, okay. Um, and then what I do is I just create um, an array here that records the last known state of each of the buttons, and that's gonna let me know whether one is re um, pressed or whether one is released because if the last state uh, of button one, let's say, was that it was not pressed, and then we read it and it is pressed, um, then we know it's been pressed. If the last state was that it was pressed, and then sometime later it goes to not pressed again, we know that it was released in that frame. So it means you can actually take actions, not just on knowing right now whether the, the button is being held down or not, but uh, triggers sort of at the point that it changes state. So. Um, that's what this is for, and obviously it's got four elements, one for each of the um, the keys. So in setup, um, nothing special here. I just begin the serial connection, 
Um, for this example, I'm going to use the serial connection just to read out the uh, the readings of each of the pins. So I'm actually going to need that here. Um, in a real life situation, what you might do is uh, test the sequence of buttons that were pressed in the right order and, and make something happen. But for now, I just want to show you how to read the inputs. Um, and I define all of the key input pins as input pull-up. Um, now, I'm, I'm covered this in the past, but it's worth mentioning again. When you're working with uh, switches of any kind, so it could be a keypad like this, or it could be a, a, like a simple lever type switch or a push button switch, it's kind of easy to think that um, when the switch is not being pressed, that must be a low signal, and when the switch is being pressed, that's a high signal. Um, but that's not quite right. When the switch is not being pressed, what you've got is um, effectively what's called a floating pin. The input pin hasn't got any um, signal going to it at all. It's not connected to ground, but it's not connected to 5 volts either. And those are the two states that define uh, low and high in uh, logic level code on an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. So um, you need to, basically when the button's not being pressed, you need to force it to a known state of either high or low. It doesn't really matter which. Um, but the most convenient way to do it, on an Arduino at least, is to use something called the pull-up resistors, which are already built um, onto the board. So rather than defining the, the key pins as inputs, I'm going to define them as input pull-ups. And what that means is that um, when nothing is detected on the pin at all, it's actually going to be connected to 5 volts via a pull-up resistor. And that is going to pull up the value that is read at that pin to 5 volts unless it is positively grounded to, um, to on a circuit to ground, which will pull it down to zero. So it kind of gets rid of that unknown floating value in the middle and says, OK, nothing else is being read on this pin. But uh, we have got this resistor and we're going to go through that up to 5 volts. It's going to pull it up to 5. The only net effect of that is kind of reverses the logic from then on. Because when the, when the button is pressed, um, what it's going to do is that's going to connect it to ground. And it's going to drop the signal to 0 volts. So when it's pressed, that is low or 0 volts. And when it's not pressed, that is high or 5 volts because we're pulling it up to a known value. It just whenever you're working with any kind of switch that would otherwise leave a kind of an open circuit of unknown value, um, this is just a way that you can make that uh, robust and reliable and actually usable. So um, the loop function itself, all we do is we loop through each of the four um, uh, pins and we do a, a digital read on the pins. Now obviously we can use any digital pins for this because the button is either on or off. Um, it's not like there can be any other value in between. So we'll read the pin that we defined in our array at the top corresponding um, to the current loop iterator and we'll say is it pressed or not. The little exclamation mark there means to um, invert the value or reverse the value and that's because we're using this pull-up resistor. So when digital read reads high, we're actually going to say that is pressed is no. And when digital read is low, we're going to say that is pressed is high. And that's because we're using the pull up. Um, and then we just uh, go through the two very simple logic steps. So if the last known state of this button was false, but the current known state is true, that means it's been pressed in this frame. And if the last known state was true, but now it's false, that means it's been released in this frame. So we'll just um, print that to the, the console. And then we update the value in the array to show what is the, the current known value. So here I have my Arduino Uno running that code and I have my four buttons. So if I press the first button down, you'll see the serial log says that button one was pressed. And then when I release it, I'll get the trigger that it was released. If I do that on one of the other buttons, let's try this one. So button two was pressed and released, button one was pressed. And even while I'm holding that one down, I can now trigger another button. Um, so my one was pressed some time ago, but it hasn't been released yet. I can still press other buttons. And now if I release one, you'll see that it logs on the screen like that. Okay, so let's look at the three by four matrix keypad like this now. Now, um, you may have thought when we were looking at uh, this one, remember I told you that it had five 
wires to connect uh, one common ground and then four signal pins for each of the individual buttons so you might think that on a keypad like this you're going to need an awful lot of pins to connect um, because there's 12 individual buttons and then a common ground that would be 13 pins to connect um, thankfully that's not actually the case there are in fact only seven pins to connect here and the reason is um, because it's wired or the way you read the signal is in a slightly different way Imagine this as a uh, matrix of um, vertical and horizontal wires, which is in fact exactly what's going on here. So you have four wires going across, that's four of your pins, and you have three wires going vertically, that's the other three. Whenever any button is pressed, um, you can define that as an intersection between any two of those uh, vertical and horizontals. So uh, what you have is you have um, a total number of connectors corresponding to the number of unique columns and rows in your matrix um, and then you uh, can define any button that's being pressed as a result of an intersection between a pair of those column and row pins. So because the way we're reading the signal in this case is slightly different the code is actually uh, slightly altered as well. So the first thing you'll notice is that um, I'm including a library here. Now this is a standard library that um, comes with Arduino, but you might not have it installed by default. Um, so the first thing you can do is if you just go to the sketch menu up here and then go to include library, manage libraries. And when that pops up, what you need to do is search for a library called a uh, keypad um, and install the latest version of that in your project and then you just include a reference to it like this. So keypad will define the helper functions that's going to help uh, read what key was pressed in a matrix um, defined by those row and column pins which I mentioned. So uh, we need to define a few parameters now to set that keypad up working. So the total number of rows for this pad was four and it has three columns and then the arrangement of uh, keys in the rows and columns was as follows. Um, now you can kind of put any uh, value, any character value you want here actually, but this is going to be the value that's returned by the keypad library when you ask it to say what key was pressed in that position. Um, so if you want it to be a symbol or something else that's fine, but uh, it kind of makes sense to have the value that was printed on the key or else you're going to confuse yourself. Um, and then in these two lines here what we define is the uh, pins that are assigned to the rows and the columns. So in this example here, my pins were output from uh, left to right. I had the four row pins to start with, and then I had the three column pins. So the way I've uh, wired them up onto my board, as you can see in the, um, the wiring component there, starting at pin 11. So I've gone 11, 10, 9, 8 for my um, row pins, and then 7, 6, 5 for my column pins. Um, and then with all those parameters in place, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new keypad instance. Um, so this is uh, a function that comes, or this is a, a constructor that comes from the keypad class that we imported right at the top. And what we're going to do is to tell it to make a map out of the keys that we defined here. Uh, these are the row pins and the column pins that were assigned. And this is the number of rows and columns in the matrix as a whole. Um, so that's going to take care of all of the, the clever stuff from now on basically is this keypad definition here. Um, set up again, we um, just set up a serial connection so we can see what's going on. And then the loop function you'll see is actually much easier than I had before. I don't need to define the triggers and things as I did before. All I'm going to do is to call this function get key, which will tell me uh, the value of a key that is currently being pressed and then I'm going to print whatever value it was and that's going to print uh, the what was defined, the character that was defined in this keys array up here. So I'm just running that code now on this Arduino here and I've got the serial monitor up so you can see so if I simply type uh, something like 5890 hash um, 326, I don't know, uh, you'll see the digits will come up there on the serial monitor um, and you can take any action you want in response to a correct code being entered on the keypad. So that brings me on to the 4x4 uh, sort of rigid keypad uh, like this. 
Um, now, when this came supplied, mine uh, came with here. Rather than having a ribbon cable attached to it, uh, it just had um, some pins like this. Um, so I got some, some headers and um, just soldered them on uh, like that. And then used some uh, DuPont connectors uh, like that to uh, join them to my Arduino. Um, now, as in the last example, so we're now on to a system of columns and rows. And because this is a 4x4 four four matrix, this has a total of eight connectors required. Uh, so one for each of the columns, one for each of the rows. And again, we'll use the keypad class to work out uh, which button is being pressed based on the intersection of a row and column. Um, there's actually uh, one pin either side at the end of the connector which is not used. Um, so I'm only used, there's actually uh, 10 pins in a line there. I'm just using the middle eight. Not quite sure what the other two are for, but they don't seem to do anything, so I'll just ignore them. Um, and uh, I'll show you the code, which is very similar. So here's the code for the 4x4 four four matrix. It's almost identical to the 4x3 example. We're still using the same keypad library. Um, the difference is here we're now defining four rows and four columns, and we've added the extra character onto the end of the matrix here. So those four letters A, B, C, D are on the end of the array there. Um, the other slightly weird difference, which took me a while to figure out actually, in the previous example, the pinouts were lifted uh, listed from left to right with the rows first and then the columns. For some reason on this style of keypad um, mine lists the columns first and then the rows. So that's why my columns are using pins 11, 10, 9, 8 um, and then there's a little bit of a, a gap uh, on the diagram you can see on the right hand side and then the rows are on 7, 6, 5, 4. Uh, if you get this wrong, what you'll find is that when you try to print out the code, you'll kind of get, you will get a response coming back, but the, the letters and the numbers will kind of be transposed. Um, so it took me a while to realise that. So you might just need to check on your pad, whether it's row or column first. Um, after that, the code's actually identical. We make a keypad based on the parameters above, um, which are just slightly modified as explained. So there's that one extra column. Begin the serial connection. And then we just repeatedly call get key from this keyboard class, uh, keypad class, and we'll print it. So here I have my keypad uh, with my Arduino, which is running that sketch. And if I simply press any of the buttons on the keypad, you'll see the serial monitor there displaying uh, the value of the button I pressed. So this feels a little bit more robust than um, the membrane examples. Um, it feels like it would probably last a bit longer if you attached it to a real prop. Um, and it obviously has screw holes, so you can just screw it down. But essentially they all work in very similar ways and they can be used in lots of different puzzles. So um, I hope that has helped explain a little bit more about how to use these. Thanks very much for watching.